Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. Prince George, 10, is currently second in line for the throne and is celebrating his birthday today. The eldest child of Kate and William attends Lambrook School in Windsor and is occasionally photographed at royal events like Wimbledon and Trooping the Color. Judy James, a professional body language expert, spoke exclusively to Express.co.uk to explain how the young prince is coping with his future responsibilities. She said, as he reaches double figures in age, George is looking increasingly like a boy who fully understands his destiny thanks to what are unique set of circumstances in his royal upbringing. His body language is evolving from a boy who needed a little nudging to produce his royal smiles and to step forward to shake hands, to a boy who appears keen to step forward himself, perform active handshakes and use eye contact with the people he meets and even engage in some small talk on visits. His social confidence signals increase on every outing and he appears to enjoy his role as his father's wingman, sharing some of the duties as well as sharing some of the fun of events like football and tennis matches. When we see George at the football or tennis, we get treated to the sight of a boy who is also allowed to be spontaneous and natural shouting, cheering and punching the air like his dad or like any other child excited by the game. But why have his circumstances been unique in terms of his induction into his future role and his apparent acceptance and comfort of that destiny? Firstly, he has witnessed his grandfather's coronation firsthand and even participated. It would be inconceivable that, at the age of nine, a boy who was also involved in the ceremony would not have been told and be able to understand that it would be his father's turn next and his own after that. His behavior on the day was impeccable in a way that would probably only occur if he had a pretty full understanding of what was required. Charles was present at his mother's coronation, but at the same age as Louis, he just watched from the balcony looking bored. George witnessed and participated at exactly the right age to understand fully, and unlike Charles, he also saw his father's role that he would use as a role model. William's role modeling is also an important factor. George sees his father as able to enjoy a happy marriage and family life, a reasonably free and fun life away from royal duties, and a meaningful, rewarding life where he feels he can make a real difference to other people. The Prince of Wales always looks reasonably relaxed and positive about his destiny and fully tooled up in terms of what to do with it. His own role model Charles was less appealing. Charles looked like a rather mournful heir to the throne who saw his destiny as his duty and a burden rather than a privilege. He looked anxious and tetchy at his own coronation and even as a young prince he often looked glum and rather isolated from his family. It was as though his future role set him apart from the rest of the world and the obvious misery of his first marriage only made this sense of gloomy isolation worse. William, by contrast, is a very hands-on family man who appears surrounded by loving, close relationships and able to lead as normal a life as possible. Being king will look less like a curse and something to dread for George than it did for his own father. George also has the ideal sibling team for the role. He has a confident sister who he is close to and is not averse to nudging him into the right places and poses at formal events. He always responds to this obediently, without any sign of complaint, meaning he probably loves the backup. He also has a younger brother that he can protect and even help coach for royal outings, and this will help grow his own confidence. Charles was expected to go to a tough school before a career in the military, and this career route was non-negotiable, as was his choice of bride. George is clearly being given options though, meaning there will be no square pay in a round hole effect for him when he takes to the throne. As it seems William might do, George should become a king who is allowed to mold his own version of destiny and kingship. Where Charles might have felt powerless in terms of his destiny, George has a father who is a campaigner for mental health and who seems to be steering his son into a destiny that will include choices and feelings of control, as well as a destiny that includes fun and loving relationships. So what do you think about this news, guys? Thank you for tuning in to today's discussion. As always, I encourage you to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Stay tuned for more updates on the intriguing world of royalty. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.